Hey guys, welcome back. So we're in the not so inclement weather of inside. Got a cup of coffee here. Today's gonna be a quick, uh, well, it's gonna be a Q&A video. Your questions, my answers. And a uh, quick note, the title of the video is just kind of poking fun. But uh, to be fair, you know, it's this Texas uh, snowstorm and stuff has not been fun for a lot of people. A lot of people have lost power and they're struggling. So uh, we have been very blessed to not lose power. So very thankful for that. Um, so surviving it for us has been simply been uh, adjusting the thermostat. Thankfully, um, hopefully everybody who is in much worse uh, straits because of this um, get back to normal soon. A little note on that. So uh, we're going to have a little bit of fun with this and let's get started. Gavin Ed says, favorite knife to make and favorite metal for knives. Uh, I have a lot of favorite knives to make. It just depends on what I'm sort of interested in the moment, but there's some themes, I guess. I, something that's useful, that's the main thing. Uh, favorite metal for knives, I've always been partial to steel. Actually, I think he probably means what type of steel. And, and also, that kind of depends on what the knife is for and a lot of other factors. So stuff that I use frequently include 1095, 15 and 20, 01 tool steel, 5160, ACRB2, uh, 52100. So I guess you could just say uh, I'm, I'm partial to good uh, carbon steel. Skankun42, not sure about that username, says, What is your favorite style of blade? That really depends on what you're trying to do with the blade. And again, kind of like what my favorite knife to make is. Uh, you know, I have different interests when it comes to to using them, but you know, it's really purpose driven. What are you trying to do with the knife? And that's what needs to determine sort of uh, what it is. So that's how I think about it. Um, I like something that you can easily carry that's, uh, you know, three to four inch blade maybe, maybe a little bit smaller uh, that you can have on you uh, when you need it. And then conversely, I also like kind of a big chopping blade, Bowie style or something like that. So those are two that I would pick off the top of my head. Colton Ledbetter says, is this Texas severe weather anything like your previous state? Well, yes, actually it is. <laughs> and we were not expecting to have this kind of weather down here, but we do. He also says, are you going to do any sword forging in the future? Uh, yeah, actually, that's the plan. He also says, uh, also please make another one of those tactical tomahawks from Lee Spring. It's one of my favorite products I've seen on Bladesmith Cleat. Yeah, he's talking about this one right here. I, uh, I do plan on making one similar to that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with something like a hunter's hatchet style, uh, probably on the next, next go around with that particular, uh, style of project. Nate Dog says, what's been your most challenging build and why? Well, that's actually a fairly easy question to answer because I was on Forge of the Fire and the projects that I did on there, uh, because of the time constraint, were probably the most uh, difficult projects that I've completed. You know, the, the builds themselves were not anything terrible, uh, but you know, when you have a time constraint slapped on there, it's a whole different deal. So because of that reason, that, those would be the most uh, challenging projects that I've done to date. He also says, if price is no problem, what would be one tool you'd buy for the forge? That's pretty easy. I'd like to have a power hammer and a place to put it, but <laughs> yeah, power hammer would be what I would answer for that, that question. Heavy Forge says, what did you do before bladesmithing full time and what do you enjoy outside of smithing? Uh, I did a lot of things before I, before I um, began smithing full time. Um, just prior to, you know, going full time in smithing, or prior to making that my job, prior to my job, I uh, was in law enforcement for seven years. Before that, I was a, a machine operator, machinist at a manufacturing, little manufacturing facility. Um, ran the manual lays and mills and also the CNC stuff, so that was fun. Um, before that, I, I worked at a ski hill for a couple of years in the winter, and then off season, I was uh, shoeing horses, uh, farrier for a couple of years. Um, you know, did some carpentry work. As far as what I uh, uh, enjoy outside of smithing, um, yeah, well, there's there's a few things. Uh, like, I enjoy learning about uh, steel metallurgy, um, you know, different, uh, how do you use handle materials, uh, 
properly, um, knife making like blade grinding, that kind of stuff. But in all seriousness, when I'm not uh, smithing or working, then uh, I'm pretty busy with uh, family and stuff like that. My wife and I have four little girls, so it keeps us pretty busy. And uh, I, don't have, I don't have a lot of time to do, to pursue hobbies or things like that at this stage of life. So uh, that's kind of it. But uh, I, I really enjoy the outdoors and, uh, you know, practicing like bushcraft, wilderness survival skills, that kind of stuff. Don't, don't do that quite as much anymore recently. Uh, but, you know, we, we have other yard projects that we're always working on. We raise some different animals. We got a little flock of, you know, laying hens and dogs and stuff like that. So all the different stuff we do as a family uh, keep me pretty busy outside of uh, working. Wright family says, do you ever forge any knives that aren't Damascus, just plain steel? Uh, yes, I do. There's quite a few of them. But you're probably not going to see as many of them on YouTube here as the Damascus or powder welded steel because typically it's not as interesting for people to watch. Boring. Boring. Nope. And so for that reason, while I do have several, at least several model steel blade projects on the channel here, you probably have a higher ratio of the pattern welded just for the content factor. Signal Guy says, hand sanding, what's your method of hand sanding and do you prefer wet or dry sanding? Well, I do prefer wet sanding. <laughs> when you're hand sanding a blade, you need to have some kind of stiff or hard backer, and I use just a steel um, piece of steel, you know, rectangular cross section. Other guys use, you know, triangular, which can be better for getting into um, closer spaces and different things like that. Um, but as long as it's steel or hard metal, you know, that you're using behind your sandpaper, that's going to give you the best results. Otherwise, the sandpaper will be able to just kind of flow over uh, irregularities and doesn't give you the, the flat, um, consistent uh, finish that you're trying to go for. And as far as the, uh, the wet sanding, I use straight ammonia simply because that's what I have to uh, neutralize, you know, blades and stuff like that. You can use the window cleaner that has ammonia in it, and that's one of those is what I would prefer, and it, uh, it really makes a difference. Keeps your sandpaper from filling up and it makes it cut longer and lubricates it a little bit. Of course, you have to use wet, dry sandpaper uh, so it doesn't fall apart on you. And some guys have used uh, WD-40, which you can do that too, but it's a little more expensive, so I wouldn't personally do that, and it doesn't uh, work all that that much better is to you know to do that. I will use WD-40 on like the final hand uh, hand rub finish where like I'm drawing the blade across you know the bar of sandpaper to put that consistent finish on there. I do use WD-40 at that point because it just makes it cuts nicely and leaves a nice finish, but um, not the rest of the time. Something it says, do you actually use any of the knives you make? Well, no. Unless I'm out in my backyard pretending to survive a frozen wasteland. But really, you know, most of the knives I make, other people use because I make them for other people. But yeah, I've used my knives a little bit here and there. John Shop, Shap, something, says, are you planning to make a Laplander knife? Uh, are you talking about the Laplander as in the indigenous people of northern Eurasia that live up where it's freezing cold with ice and snow and reindeer? I'm sensing a theme here. Uh, yeah, I might make one of those knives at some point. They're, I, one of the things I do enjoy is different cultures, you know, learning about different cultures. And so in the context of blades, that's especially interesting to me. Timothy O'Claire says, I'm just starting out and building a coal forge out of scrap and salvage. Uh, what do you suggest I focus on as a beginner? Uh, yeah, so what I would focus on as a beginner is 
just learning the basics and that might sound a little too simplistic but you know you're talking about using a hammer and I don't know if you've used a hammer a lot before but you know using a framing hammer or a carpentry hammer is, is uh, fairly different than using a blacksmithing or smithing hammer and uh, you know focusing on the basic skills is going to serve you well uh, in the future with any project that you take on so um, as a starting point, for example, I just put out a video last week on how to learn hammer skills uh, by forging a leaf project. Now, that's that's a great example of something you can do, you know, multiple times, make multiples of those, and really hone your uh, your hammer skills and and things that I can't really tell you that you have to learn yourself. But just you know, the way that you hold the hammer, you know, a couple degrees this way is going to affect how the face contacts your piece of work. And that's all stuff that you're gonna to have to see with your eye and adjust as you go. So, um, you know, understanding some basics and then just going and doing it really is gonna be the best way, in my opinion, to start learning this stuff. And if <clears throat> things are turning out right, you know, you might have to go back to the books or, well, you know, YouTube <laughs> these days, the internet or whatever, and, and ask some questions or, or research something a little bit more and then go back out to the forge and, and practice that stuff. That's kind of that's kind of my MO as far as uh, learning stuff that I've used for, uh, since I started actually. All right guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed it and maybe even learned something. Time to head out to the shop and keep working on some projects. So thanks for watching. As always, we'll see you on the next video.